so I had this friend who came to live with me in Vancouver, me and my roommate. Um, and he was only supposed to be there for three days and ended up being there for three months. And that was, that's a side note, but, um, really, really good friend of mine that I knew from university. And, um, he was the one that started unpacking this baggage that I had of like people, you know, misusing the gifts of the Holy Spirit to like try to manipulate me into things. And, um, one day he said, I just, I really do want to pray for you for baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I was like, nope, (laughs) bye. (laughs) But, um, he talked to me and asked me, like answered all my questions and, um, addressed my fears. And so, um, I decided that I would try this, you know, I would try to be open to, to the Lord. And, um, so they, he and two other friends that were staying with us at the time, um, prayed for me one night and it was, um, it was a wintry night in Vancouver. That doesn't really mean much. It's kind of cold in our house. I felt really, really cold. Um, and I, when they laid their hands on me, um, I just felt warmth, like shoot, they, they put their hands on like my back and I, it shot like all the way down. It wasn't just radiating warmth, but it was just, it was like all the way down my spine and all the way up to the top of my head. And it started tingling the top of my head. And I paid attention to that because he had said when he experiences the presence of God, he can feel it. He feels tingling in the top of his head. And I was like, well, that's interesting. So, um, I was just kind of a, a coming at this with like total open mind, trying to just be like, this might be a thing. This might not be a thing. Uh, so we're, they're praying for me and they're, um, and the tingling's there and it's there and it's there. And, um, finally one of the, the other guys that was with us is like, I can see a picture of you and you have flowers growing out of the top of your head and they're on fire and people come along and pick them and that hurts you. But there's a sense that it's going to be okay because they'll grow back. And he's like, does that mean anything to you? And I was like, no, (laughs) but I paid attention to that because my head was tingling and he's talking about the top of my head and I had not said anything about it. And so, um, after they were kind of processing with me and I was telling this guy like, yeah, I did like, I had tingling in my head, you know, and it wasn't like all over. It was just like in one spot. And the third guy goes, I could see the flowers too. And that's where they were. And I was like, Oh, (laughs) okay. So I don't know what it meant. Like I was just like going about my life. Like, well, that was interesting. The tingling stayed around for like three days or something. And, and then it kind of dissipated and, um, like two years went by and I told this story as just like a a fun anecdote of what happened when my friend prayed for me and people would try to guess what that meant. And it never really resonated with me, but I was working this job where every summer I had like um, a new crew of college students that I'd hired to to work at various um, camps that we ran across Canada. And so I was with this guy in a car driving, like we were going to like Staples or something. And he we were just chatting. So I was telling him this story and he starts laughing and he's like, I fully know what that means. And I was like, what? And he's like, no, I a hundred percent know what, what it means. And so, um, he wouldn't tell me while we were in the store though, like, which, which was really annoying. So we get back in the car and I'm like, we're not going anywhere until you tell me. And so he just started talking about how the flowers represent the gifts that God has given me and they're beautiful and attractive to other people. And the fire represents God's presence in those gifts. And they're meant to be picked by other people and given away. They're not meant for me to, to keep them. And the times when I feel the most dry in my life are the times when I don't have any flowers left in that garden. And I have to seek opportunities with God, things that, things that are life-giving to me that replant flowers in that garden in order to get through those dry times. And as he was talking, that like, well, like I said before, like my life just started to make sense. Like all these different things started falling into place for me. And it's a paradigm through which I see my life now that like I... Um, I know that I'm supposed to pour out for other people that I'm supposed to allow them to come into this garden and pick these flowers and, and take these gifts and use them. Um, and that I'm supposed to be intentional about the things that give me, um, that, that replant those flowers. Leading worship is sometimes, um, one of those things that, um, replant flowers, really, really good intentional time with God, really good intentional time with Christian friends usually plants those flowers back for me. And so I have to be really intentional about doing that or else I get to a point in my life where I'm like, I hate everything. (laughs) So, wow. Wow. I'm so glad you shared that. Isn't that just the perfect picture for what we're talking about? It is, uh, for multiple reasons. First off, I didn't know that leading worship was, why don't don't you do do that more often? (laughs) 
Because I haven't flexed that muscle in a while. Okay. <laughs> you might be flexing that muscle more soon. <laughs> um, but this is really cool for multiple reasons. This really lines up with uh, a lot of what you see in the scripture. What that person said about you, seeing the flowers, that's what we would call uh, prophecy. The one who prophesies speaks to one's uh, comfort and encouragement. And what's really cool is that it was more than just like something for um, a moment. It was the word that was spoken to you when you were filled with the Holy Spirit. It was kind of like a monumental thing for you to look at as kind of like a, a, a an important thing in life. And it reminds me of when Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, remember the prophecy that was spoken about you when they mm. laid hands on you. Mm. And it's like, like, remember that. Yep. Don't forget that. I'm actually um, thinking about getting a tattoo because I forget to replant those flowers. Like one of those forehead tat, like <laughs> <No>. flower. <laughs> like on my arm. You can't get it on don't your arm. Don't tell my mom, though. I'm just kidding. It's got to be on the head just somewhere. Kidding, <laughs> just shave your head, get the tattoo. <laughs> don't see your mom until my the hair grows back. <laughs> Somebody's listening to this and like, this is such a beautiful moment. Like, why are they talking about head tattoos just now? destroyed it. But if you go into my office, there is a, um, a pencil crayon drawing that um, Kiara Lansing did for me of flowers that are on fire. And that's um, why. I didn't know that's she special. made that. Yeah. And I, I, I love what you said because it, it gives us this picture of going to the Lord, seeking his face, seeking to be filled by him, right? Like talking about like cultivating that time with the Lord so that these plants would grow and that his presence would be on them. But mm -hmm. for what purpose? Yeah. To give them away, yeah. right? To go and be a blessing, to go and serve others. And isn't that just the perfect picture of, of, of what we're called to as believers, to be filled with the spirit for the sake of others, right? Um, and to, of course, be in close relationship with God. Um, but all of these gifts are so that we can go out and bless others and, and yeah. be a blessing to the body, the, the church. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. No. But it's really, really good 